I want to hear it in your own words. Why won't you have a blood transfusion? Because it's wrong. Go on. God has told us it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Why is anything wrong, my lady? We just know it. Murder, torture, lying, being unfaithful in your marriage. And how do we just know it? Because in our hearts, God has put it there. Is transfusion like torture? Well, they're both wrong. I wish I could make you see this. Blood isn't just a biological thing and it isn't just a symbol. It's life itself. It's what we are. That was a clip from the Children Act and I'm delighted uh, and slightly nervous to be talking to <laughs> the star of the film, Emma Thompson. Hello, Emma. <laughs> How are you? And this is your first show. Are you excited? I am excited. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm feeling a little bit of pressure. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have led into this talking to somebody that I'm less sort of uh, overawed by. Oh, I don't mean, I mean that as a compliment. I, might, <laughs> I, I mean that as a compliment. I don't mean you, I'm overawed by you because you're intimidating in any way. But you are, <laughs> but in a good way. In a good, in a nice, lovely way. Is it my crown, what I'm wearing? Uh, it's, you have, you feels like you have a crown at all times. <laughs> God, have I, have I opened this? Have I opened this okay? Uh, <laughs> You've opened it by making me feel very, um, well, honoured and privileged and proud. <laughs> so now we've got to stop licking each other and get on with it. Come on. Okay, sorry. Okay, we'll get into business mode. So, the Children Act. Yeah. Uh, you are absolutely fantastic in it. Thank you. Um, could you, would you mind giving me your take on what you think the film is about in terms of... Because it's quite a com it's quite a complex piece, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's one of those films that, were I to be an audience member, I'd look at it and go, "Oh, phew! Thank goodness!" And add, uh, it's a grown-up film, you yes. know. And and it's a relief. I mean, I like the, all the Marvel stuff and everything like that, but I do need a grown-up film from time to time, and they don't come along that often, actually. So it's about um, a judge in the family court. Um, this extraordinary, extraordinarily clever, kind, compassionate, sort of considered, deliberate woman who's worked incredibly hard to get to where she is and and serves this role with everything that she has. And it's about a moment in her life where her marriage suddenly um, as appears to implode. She hasn't been listening, so her husband throws a sort of grenade into the room to make her listen, and it unbalances her. And so it's really about her walking this very fine border, fractured border between her personal and her public life, and how she balances it and the mistakes that she makes and how she comes to terms with those mistakes. It's... um. It's it's about so many things. That's the thing, because of course it's about the law. It's about the rights of children. Um, it's about religion, how you respect religion, how you see other people's points of view, um, and it's about marriage and how some things sometimes have to die in order to be rebuilt and reborn. Uh, and you mentioned uh, how it's a, a refreshing change from sort of all of the Marvel movies that that we're seeing. Um, I did sort of think there was a slight parallel with this film and, 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 and the Marvel films in terms of mm. near the beginning of the film mm. because your character is uh, dealing with each and every one of the cases that you see her deal with would trouble uh, somebody for a lifetime and she's dealing with those day in, day out, like non-stop. Yeah. And there's a sort of a bit near the beginning of the film where there's like a montage of you kind of dealing with these things. And it's almost like the bit where you see the superhero sort of laying the smack down on a, on a series of villains. And then after that point, you start, you get to this moment that sort of, you sort of see her change or be challenged in a way that she hasn't been before. And yeah. I thought that was a really, it felt like you'd been set up as this sort of, almost infallible kind of judge and then all of a sudden you see that kind of start to come apart don't you that's absolutely brilliant that's such a brilliant version of it so she's like this sort of super woman because yeah. i do see i know i know two female judges quite well now I made friends with two and they are to me completely superhero like the the amount of work they take on the way their brains work but also their hearts 
that there's this marriage of compassion and and of course all our heroes in those marvel movies have that marriage of courage and compassion and strength and fortitude all of those things that's what we want from our heroes so you're absolutely right she's like superman in the third one you know mm-hmm. where he kind of goes over to the dark side a bit yes. isn't it yeah and 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 it's it's true also that the two the two men in her life the young boy that she she over whose case she presides and her husband turn around and have to say to her, you're not superhuman. You know, it's time that you listened. And why don't you? You think you're so powerful and you think you're never wrong. And it uh, it's such a brilliant way of thinking about it. I'd never thought about it like that. Yes, well, I'm, I'm, that's sort of one of the things I'm very well known for. <laughs> it's just bringing a brand new spin on things that no, it occurred to nobody. Um, I should I'd see the size of this man's head, <laughs> listeners. It's, it's just, you know, huge brain. Um, the thing that I thought, that w- the other thing that struck me is because you sort of, you know, as you're talking there about the fact that she's she's got something wrong or, you know, they're sort of saying to you, you've got something wrong. Yeah. It did occur to me watching that film that that she is dealing with such immense challenges that it was almost impossible for that to not impinge on her personal life. and mm. And you see that and you see that she has that her immersion in her work has led to her relationship sort of deteriorating but it's it's not this film doesn't hold your hand through all of those things it, it allows so much interpretation and so it's not saying this is the person you should be re- this is the person you should be judging against and this is the person that you should be thinking is getting everything wrong there, there isn't that it's not black and white like that and it, and that is particularly in the cinema that we've been watching recently, I think it's quite an unusual thing, isn't it? That you, it's very much left open to the audience to sort of make up their own mind about where this is going. Because she makes wrong decisions, but she also does things that you completely agree with. And But isn't, you're never told whether that's the case. You're sort of just going along with it and, and making up your own mind, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's such a relief, isn't it, not to know that you're going to know everything right from the start. Uh, it's a great relief to me to see something like that because I, I do sometimes like going to see things that do have a very clear formula and I'll, I'll enjoy going along for that ride. Truly, I, I, I'm a very good audience for that. But this is more like, um, I mean, in a sense, it's like a foreign film. <laughs> I sort of think, you know, in a way, this is like a film that ought sure to have subtitles, you know, because you think, oh, I, I, I'm not used to seeing this kind of thing in what what a language I speak, you know, because it's just proper, complex, very, very um, subtle uh, work, work. And Ian McEwan, of course, is the master of that kind of, understanding of or it, the way in which he presents human beings is so often so true to us we are so complicated and that's why we get relief from stories that make us feel simpler make us feel more comfortable about ourselves and this story just happens in that area where you you you, you can't be comfortable but you're so right about her her job This is where some people have been said to me, well, is she a workaholic? Is she driven? No, the job is is the driving force in this. Because in the law, if you're a lawyer, you can choose to work a lot. You can choose to be driven. You can and you can earn a lot of money when you um, undertake to be a judge. You take a cut in pay. You become a public servant and you're on a rotor. So you you work in a completely different way. Your responsibilities are different and they're. They're very high, those responsibilities. And you, the women I know in that position take them extraordinarily seriously. And the the amount of work is beyond belief. So when you see her coming in, having just delivered a judgment about conjoined twins, uh, she'll be the, you know that there'll be a lot of projected hate and transference onto her. She has to deal with all of that emotional transference as well. Um, and she walks into the house, she takes her shoes off and immediately starts work on the next case because she's got no choice because she's the duty judge for the weekend. She has to keep working. She has to keep thinking. She has to keep on putting information into her head and then rearranging it according to what kind of judgment she's going to deliver, which involves her emotions, which involves her morality, which also involves everything that she's learnt, that all the stuff she's put into her brain through all the years of law school. I mean, it's just beyond my comprehension. But I loved trying to inhabit that and then of course you think well where would you put your 
your heart how how do you especially since when you sit in judgment you literally sit above everyone <laughs> that was so interesting you're sitting above you're looking down you have this overview on everyone and of course you feel like a, a god and then you come step down from that and you sit in front of your significant other who says something very uh personal and difficult and wounding and you have none of your protection and you have none of your defences and you can't deal with it. You, and, and actually, I, in some ways, I think she can't hear it or see it. Yeah. Well, I, I think that was that was one of the things, that, you know, because it's a complex film. And I think that, you know, you sort of describe how difficult her job is as a judge. And I sort of think that what I was struck by watching that is that if that job is so difficult and so challenging that if you hadn't allowed it to occupy every minute of every day, you're probably almost neglecting your duty, the importance of what you're doing. That's right. And so she's balancing that up against the demands of a relationship. And obviously your sympathy goes to her husband, Jack, played by Stanley Tucci, who's a, a great in it as well, yeah. um, who is obviously very much in, in love with her um, and just wants a little bit of attention, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, you, you sort of go, well, I don't complete, I can't, com although I do sympathise with his position, you sort of think, I don't know, I'm, as, a, as a viewer of the film, you're sort of thinking, I don't know how I, where I stand on it. I don't know who I'm siding with here almost, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, it's such a difficult thing that she's doing. I think that's, it's a, it, the film really does give a lot of credit to the audience to, in, in that way, to sort of allow you to sort of watch that without going, this is the bad guy, this is the good guy. You know, I think it's it's really impressive for that. Well, and I think what I do when I see, when I hear you say that is the, the thing about this film for me is I look at that and I go, yeah, you're absolutely right. And then you step back and you go, the question that that makes me ask is about work, about how we organise our work. Mm. Because in fact, they're both in an impossible position. As so many people are in work, they're in situations, doctors, nurses, teachers, where they have to work too much. It's mm. too much. Our working environments, the way in which we've organised our working systems um, are not friendly towards our family relations. Towards I mean, the work life balance, that whole that old phrase um, is actually the onus has been placed on us but in fact it's it's time that we place the onus of that argument on the whole system of work what we've created this we've got to keep on working keep on churning keep on instead of saying we need to balance the work itself the way in which we do this work whatever it is whether it's sitting in judgment over people's lives and deaths or whether it's it's the care of children you know which is so so important mm. um we have to rethink it because it's not working, is it? It's yeah. really not working. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. I, I I agree with you, and I think that this this film sort of very elegantly sort of puts that dilemma across. Um, you, you are. I mean, it's a very. You're great in it. I mean, you d I'm sure you're waiting for my validation on that, but I can <laughs> confirm it for you. You do get the Ranganathan seal of approval on that. Thank were you? you were you? D uh, was that was it the role, the juiciness of the role that drew you to it, or was it was that the main element? Because you sort of, I mean, I wonder if you're in the middle of it going, because you have to do some very difficult. I mean, you have to do some very difficult acting. Look at me, I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but you do. <laughs> I want. I wondered to myself if you're in the middle of a scene, just going, I'm absolutely smashing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't. I don't have time for it because basically, it look. It's because I'm pretending to be somebody else. <laughs> so when I'm pretending to be somebody else, I'm I'm them. It's right. like a child's game. Yeah. You know, when a child pretends to be a princess, they are a princess. That's how I that's how I do it. So so in a way, I, I'm not aware of what I'm doing. Yeah. It it would be, I think, very difficult to do my job <laughs> if I was aware of what I was doing. <laughs> Um, I mean, like for instance, the thing I'm proudest of in that in the, in that film is that the playing the piano and the singing is all live. Yeah. So I drove my family actually threatened to kick me out because they heard that song so many times. But my daughter just said, "I'm no, no I'm sorry, Mum. You can't. You cannot rehearse in the house. You cannot do that. Get out. Get out." <laughs> so I had a piano, that, and I worked and worked for months and months and months to 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 get that right. And 
one of the really wonderful things about that is that, of course, you've got no consciousness at all when you're playing and singing. You can't think about anything else. And you're on a very fine line because you know you're going to make mistakes and it's going to be um, unsure. And when you're unsure, you're empty of all other thoughts because you're so focused on what it is that you're doing. And that is, the I think, the only way to, to give a really... Um, authentic performance yeah yeah i would find it tricky I, I would sort of if i was doing a performance of that sort of standard it would almost be impossible for me to not stop mid-scene and go i mean i'm having a great one here <laughs> does somebody want to acknowledge that <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you feel now about this interview what's going on through your mind um are you thinking i'm smashing it or do you thinking what are you thinking well i sort of i'd be honest with you i think i've i would give myself uh, I think I'm on a sort of six and six or seven out of ten. I think I've asked the questions clearly. Yeah. I've got to be honest with you. I'm slightly disappointed in myself that I didn't give better responses because whenever I watch people interview, I always think they then cut fire off like a really insightful question off the back of that. I'll be honest. With you, there's a couple of opportunities that I think I could have done that, and I dropped the ball on that. And I, and do you know what? It's my it's my first time. I hold my hands up. I'm not perfect, but I'm learning. You know? No, but listen, as the interviewee, yeah. um, I'm giving you total totes 10 out of 10 because, I'll tell you why, you're listening to me and you're looking at me and sometimes you get, inter you get interviewed by people and you can see that they're thinking about the next thing or they're thinking about their response. Right. And if you're thinking about your response, you're not listening. Right. So you're brilliant at listening. So that's like... Emma, thank you. Tops. Thank you so much. That's fine. Thank you so much. Anytime. I've never been complimented before <laughs> about having so little going on in my mind that I'm paying direct attention <laughs> to the, the person I'm talking to. Thank you so much. You've oh. turned a negative into a positive. Um, Emma, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. You are so fantastic in this film. Thank it's you. It's been a genuine honour. Thank you. Thank you so much for your Thank. Good luck with the rest of your first day. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>